I bid you welcome. Today, we will explore the idea of all of the generations as they come forward, reincarnated one by one, each one with an essence, a mission, a purpose to be, to come into being, to become, to share, to display, to bring forward all that it is. You see, souls arrange themselves to serve the generations of man, the generations of mankind. As a soul chooses to evolve, it arranges itself almost as if you could imagine energies lining up into a pattern so that although every age and every lifetime is original and unique and perfect in its alignment at times, they can in fact be perfectly planned generations in advance, lifetimes in advance. Lifetimes can be lived in series. It can be a series of one or two or three. It can in fact be a series of twelve and more than that under unique and exceptional cases as well. As a soul begins to arrange itself to align itself into its pre-birth schedule, all manner of criteria must be met. For life is, after all, purposeful. It must be this above and before all other things. What makes a lifetime purposeful? Again, as we have explored through other topics, it is not what one does or is compelled to do in a lifetime that gives life purpose. In fact, it is life that gives purpose to life, and it is purpose that gives more life or additional purpose to life. These two partners are inseparable, inextricable from each other. They serve and align one with the other, so that a purpose is enhanced when there is more soul participation in a lifetime. How then is one lifetime more purposeful than another when the soul is more engaged in the purpose of the lifetime? How does one become or ha come to have a purpose that is more engaging than another? by devoting oneself in the life previous, in the life previous. Therefore, if you like, one way to consider it is that there is merits, degrees earned, if you like, during one life, and they are repaid in the next life, just as you might imagine that certain debts could be accumulated in one life. Well, these two must be paid at some point. The price is never too high. It is always just. In fact, it is just because it is the soul itself that adjusts either the debt to be paid or the path, the dharmic path or the treasure that is to be repaid in the next life as well. And that is why try as you may to align many lifetimes together until the life is truly engaged and lived and purposefully evaluated, it cannot be completely assessed what you will be in the next life or how that will come about. It is decided not in the moment but throughout the course of a lifetime. It is a cumulative effect. It builds and draws upon life itself. And yes, matter of fact, lifetimes can be altered and changed moment by moment. For instance, if you have had a difficult lifetime or the first three quarters of the lifetime have not gone according to plan, or those things have not gone in your favor, or perhaps the decisions that you have made have not been favorable ones, does it mean that, oh dear, well, there's only one quarter of this life to go now. May as well not bother. Guess I'm in for the long haul. No, you cannot see nor say what a soul assesses nor determines is the pivotal moment in a lifetime. 
At times the pivotal moment comes with the first breath. At times it is with the last. It is with the first realization or the last realization. Has little to do with how many times you have said please and thank you. And here comes a shocking one as well. Sometimes, not always, sometimes it matters even less whether you have just the right amount of love and compassion for your fellow traveler or not. Each soul measures the life. It is measured in a way that only the soul's light knows, for remember it is a cumulative path made not only in this life but in the previous life and sometimes in ones before that if there is a consecutive pattern that has been developed. In this way then, you, what you are, your soul, your essence, your purpose, the spirit that brings all things forward, these determine what will happen, what you will choose, what you will become in this life or the next, the frequency that you will have at birth next time, at death or transition, this, all of this is carefully crafted by the soul. It may appear to you to be of accidental proportion, not so, but even if we will argue that point, even accidents then are orchestrated by the soul or at the very least approved by them. All things then being purposeful, you now find yourself in a life that you and your soul chose. It is not a life that you stumbled into. It is not a life in which you accidentally found yourself here, regardless of what sexual patterns you believe that those that brought you into this world may have found pleasurable on one or more occasions. You are here in this body because it suits you. It suits the purpose. It suits the soul. It suits the orientation and all else associated with this life. Can some of these items be changed or exchanged? Oh yes. In fact, as you have seen, a sexual orientation or a body can be altered or changed or transfixed or what it is. Many different aspects can be changed in this life. And of course, although it is not our topic for today, I will tease and tantalize you and perhaps say that there are other times going back into the history of the earth that were more advanced than this one when a good deal more aspects could be changed. In fact, complete exchanges of certain organs and such in much more pleasurable ways than what is brought about in the bodies now. And a complete change even of a personality in certain dynamics when that was in order as well. And so to combat an addiction, for instance, well, even that could was more easily accomplished then than it is now. But of course, each life, each array, each energetic vibration, each rung on the ladder has its own way to display itself, bringing about the highest vibration for the being and the soul and for all concern. For the purpose of our discussion today, it is to bring about what is seen. In essence, what does the soul see through the eyes of the human? A fascinating topic, would you not agree? What does the soul see? From where does it see? What is its purpose in each particular generation that it passes, or in fact through each decade of life that it calls to itself and therefore displays for itself? What does the soul have to gain? What is the purpose day by day, year by year, of each generation, of each decade of life? What does the soul have to gain? Well, we begin then. First we will see what does the soul see through the eyes of a newborn. Here is a new life. Here is a brand new life just out of the womb, just out of the womb of creation. Remember that. Remember that out of the womb one comes out of creation into the world. Yes, out of the mother's womb as well. But first, before it has come out of the mother's womb, it has come from the point of creation. 
from the center from which all things come. Do all things come from this center of creation, all animals and plants and like that? In a manner of speaking, yes. However, there must be a certain consciousness that is achieved, an ability to evolve one's own consciousness, and then there is a different aspect of creation that lends itself for that. On this planet, then, it is only humanity that comes from the center, from the heart, from the womb of creation, from there into the mother's womb, from which life continues to develop then. The same is not true of the plant kingdom, nor the mineral kingdom, nor the animal kingdom, because the consciousness is developed, but to a different degree, to a different vibration, and not to the degree that it can choose to evolve on its own. It does not decide on its own, then, other than where humanity is concerned. From the center of creation, then, comes the idea, the idea of birth, the idea of being born, the idea of being, to say, I am, and in essence, that is almost as easily as it comes about. There is a way, there is a place, there is a uniqueness by which the soul says, I am. Am. And so it is born. A soul is born each time there is a new life. Now, a paradox, you see, because the soul, in fact, is timeless. And it exists within all time and all landscape. It is eternal. And yet the soul is reborn into a new life. And you see, in some ways, it must do so. It must accept the keys, the pattern to this life. Because if a soulful, eternal being were to come into a physical body, in essence, it would burn up that body. It would be too much energy. It would be, yes, you would say, oh, but then I would know what I was in the last life and the one before that and all else. Yes, if it were possible, you would come with that expression. And there are very few that are able to exhibit these characteristics. But even these are toned down so they can only remember so much and so much of this or that lifetime, not the entire amount. Again, not for the sake of consciousness not being able to remain consciousness, Consciousness can remain and in fact grow in consciousness. However, it is difficult for it to exist in its full consciousness in the third dimensional patterning in the matrix of the earth at this particular time juncture on the third dimension within the type of physical bodies that you occupy. This is what would become burned up. And with burning up the human body, it would also combust. Truly, I tell you, the bodies would self-combust because the consciousness, the vibration, would be too much. In order to control that, the soul leaves most of its essence behind, as it were, checking it at the gate, if you like and thereby just the right quotient, which only each soul determines for itself, determines how much of that life, how much life essence, how much vitality, life force, will be needed to animate that body for an entire life or for the purpose that it has designated for itself. Each soul determines this, and here it may surprise you to know it is a bit of a guess, you know. Not entirely like pulling straws, but it is a bit of a guess because the soul must match its purpose to a certain ideal, to a life quotient, to what it has brought with it, to what it knows that it must leave behind so that it can adequately care for the body and for a purpose, and the chance, in essence, that it takes as well is how much of that essence will be needed to animate the body throughout an entire life. And so it takes into consideration the heredity of that body, the lineage of the physical body that it has taken on, and from there it makes a certain determination 
which is a little bit like a gamble, I will tell you. The odds are very good, but it is a gamble just the same. In order to ensure that some of this will go rather well, the soul will tend to incarnate into the same structural bodies, into the same heredity bodies, many times over, particularly if it is a purpose that has not been fully completed or fully realized, because by then, just as you might imagine, the odds are less, the gamble is less, and so the soul knows well what it chooses. Thereby you may see that one grandfather, for instance, becomes the grandson or the great-grandson following in a tradition or following the rules of heredity to better serve a purpose and to better serve the soul's preference in this case. So here you have patterns of family for a variety of different reasons as well. And so as the soul then continues its progress, it begins to move from this center of creation by announcing itself. Announcing itself steps down its energy, surrounds it with a field of earthly light, a field of physical light, a field of density. And here I tell you that it could be uncomfortable as well, which is another reason that the soul chooses to leave behind most of its essence to check it on the other side, bringing together only that which is most necessary here, so only a smaller amount must undergo that process. Far before then there is conception, there is an essence or variety of souls then that have already densified their essence, made themselves part of the earth soul or earth light. So the term earth light or earth soul applies to the group entity or the group consciousness of those that are awaiting birth or awaiting conception or awaiting to be aligned with a purposeful place upon the earth. This surrounds the earth, if you like, with a certain glow. There is a certain auric field that is part of the earth light, and it is animated by life wanting to be life, by life wanting to emerge upon the earth. Now, a soul cannot quite help coming to the earth if it is within its pattern to do so. It will align itself within the earth. It will simply fall into this pattern. It is not the same of having a choice and saying, well, I think I'll go or I think I'll wait. When a certain vibration draws it to the earth, that is exactly what happens. And it begins to feel itself pulled, tugged ever so lightly. And of course, that same pull and tug will take one back as well to any other vibration or any other place, for it is the greater essence and the greater soul that understands exactly when the timing is most correct for this. The soul has now arranged itself into the earth light spectrum. It is a field and a quality of light. It is a qualitative place, and there one is already part of the earth field, part of all that is taking place. Now, this is still a somewhat timeless place. And here, souls can exist for a very long time. Too long by your standards, if we were to name the years, which can be anywhere from, well, as little as six months to one year, for as many as several thousand years. It can exist in that earth-light place. And it would not seem a long time to the soul, because the soul is not counting time, it is not measuring time, it is actively working or becoming or discovering, it is existing in many different levels, many different planes at once, and at the same time, little by little, it is being drawn into the earth's qualitative field by which eventually there will be an energetic match a conception that takes place not only at the point or center of creation, but one that is found within a match within earth, the center of the earth from which then union takes place. 
It may seem to you that the union takes place between a man and a woman, or the masculine and the feminine, the egg and the sperm. In essence, the union always takes place in the center of the earth, and then, and then, the union, the physical union, takes place. For as you know, all things are truly energetic, and from that energetic place, they then become physicalized. So a physical conception, even that is not the point of conception, it is the physical moment or the concept, the perfect or divine timing by which a physical reality or an essence has merged with another. And so the center of the earth also then is responsible for life creating life, life making or bringing life. And then from there, there is the conception, the physical conception, and energies being perfect as they are, magnetic as they are, and as the earth is, conception begins to draw to itself some of the ideal forms associated with that. Imagine that. I wish to say to you that at times, not always, but at times, there are a few different souls or soul essences that would be a perfect fit for a certain conception, you see? So it is not automatic when a child or an egg and a sperm are conceived who or what soul will occupy that. Sometimes it is determined at a slightly later date when the most perfect match remember that the earth is very economic as is the universe and so once a perfect match has been achieved then it is well in essence assigned and a soul will claim that if you like its purpose and then there is a fusing together of that of energy and purpose of spirit and matter and there is a time to become accustomed to that where the man and the woman, mother and father, if you like, then begin to have a concept or an idea of what is taking place. Usually this takes place even before there is any knowledge on the physical parts of that a pregnancy has taken place. All of this then is essence. It is energy. It is pure energy as a matter of fact. Once all of this has taken place, the process continues then. It is a process of, well, unfoldment from one side and then more of a folding from the other. The soul must then continue to condense itself, condense its energy, and this is not an easy nor a pleasant process sometimes. It must begin to leave behind some of what it has accumulated. Imagine if you had a very grand home with treasures from all parts of the world, and then someone came and said, Look, you have just a few moments now. You must go about and pick your favorite memories or your favorite things, because we are going then on a journey. You will come back to these things, but perhaps you can only bring just a few now. And in essence, that is when the soul begins to form a purpose. Now it knows what body it will occupy. It knows what family will assist it or become part of that process, part of the learning, part of the skills, part of the demonstrations of life. And based upon that, the soul will then begin to make for itself a unique purpose. So the unique purpose comes about then based on what the soul knows and has brought with it, as well as what it has left behind. What it has left behind is temporary in nature, and it may go to evaluate at any particular time. So it is not that it is leaving it behind for all time, it is simply leaving it behind for the moment. It has access to it. In fact, it has access to all of its records, to all of the akash that it has known, that it has been, to all of the breaths that it has taken, to all of the memories, to all of the lifetimes that it has occupied. All of this, all of this is available to the soul, but it cannot carry it in that moment or into that body or at that place. In essence, it must make an agreement, if you like, a kind of mental agreement at where is the next meeting place, at what intervals there will be consciousness. And at times there are agreements made then 
with other souls or soul essences, what you would term guides and angels. Here is where turning points are discovered. Here is where agreements are made. Remembrances, patterns, bargains, all of this begins to come forward here at this level and at this place. And the soul begins then to arrange those things in what order it wishes to know and to be and to live life. It begins to arrange itself year by year, decade by decade, according to its purpose, according to certain, well, decisions, according to patterns, according to how the purpose begins to arrange itself. It is a pattern. It can look, even I tell you, a little bit like a star, a little bit like a mandala. And here begins the soul then to arrange for itself a purpose, a life, a map, intervals, what it will come to, what it will know, what it will choose. And so a life is in the process of being formed, perhaps you can see. So a purpose then, when you think about your purpose for this life, Think about this is the process that took place and your soul, that which animates you and your purpose, then constructed an architecture, an architecture of light, a purposeful, engaged architecture of life, and it began to build form around that. It had a concept. The conception is a concept. It is an idea of what life would be. And around that conception, around that idea, a life was built, skills were called upon, memories were arranged in certain patterns, and here I tell you that the memories were arranged in essence in a linear pattern, so that for the sake of this life, it will seem as if you have li lived this life first, and then the one prior and then the one prior to that. It may not necessarily be that way exclusively. The soul arranges this because the soul has come from a universe, from a multiverse, from a variety of patterns, layers and veils, you see. And so it has access to a great deal. The soul does not come from a soulful, long progression of lifetimes that are linked together in a specific order. They are linked by a beautiful order, by a beautiful pattern, but not necessarily a simple in-line pattern. However, for the sake of this life, for the sake of the third dimensional life, that is how it comes about, that is how it appears. So when you think of a life or you have been told what you were in the previous life or the one before that, that is what the soul has arranged for you to view, for you to understand about you because it suits this life. In another life, in another time, the information may come in a different way. It may come in a different order, as a matter of fact. And even, I tell you, what you are certain was your name, in a certain life, even that may be rearranged into a different anagram, into a different name that has the same vibration. So it is not to say that you cannot trust the guidance or the information that you are given when you inquire as to these. However, you must leave room for guidance to be smaller in some areas and larger in others, to be made available to you for the purpose by which you are seeking it. Once the soul has arranged for itself a purpose, once it has arranged for itself a certain guidance, a certain truth, then it begins the process of fusing with the child or the physical, the form that it will take. This also is unique to the soul, and perhaps you have already heard that at times it takes place almost immediately, almost so, and other times it takes a goodly amount of time. Here I will tell you it can take a maximum of two years. It can be much less than that, 
but it can be as much as two years. At the time of birth, then, the child is born. The physical child is born. And yes, there is a soul associated with the physical child. It is not as if the child is born soulless. However, the purpose associated with the soul has not yet been fully engaged. Like an engine, if you like, it has not yet fully been turned over. It is still undergoing a certain amount of maintenance, if you like. The soul, however, has already chosen and engaged with, then, the idea of the body and the family and the form that it has chosen. And then the soul goes about the process, if you like, of customizing that life. Yes, just as it sounds. The soul claims the life of its own, and depending upon the vibration of the soul, and here there is a great deal of variety as well, depending upon that vibration, the soul then begins to work with the DNA of the child that it will become. And again, only according to the ability of the soul. A very advanced soul can change a great deal about a body or a life or program it, if you like, to do this or that or to change almost automatically at a certain age. It can program the DNA to become more active or less active at certain particular junctures or triggers of life as life is arranged. Not every soul is able to do this, and as a matter of fact, some take just what they get. If the soul has not performed a great deal of advancement for itself, or sought much consciousness, if you like, then limited are its skills, rudimentary are its tools, and it will not be able to make for itself as much of all of the choices that it would like to see come about in that life. So here you would have a life then that falls into, well, more pitfalls than another, if you like, or is met with more surprises than another, or is a little bit less able to manage one degree or segment of life than another. And of course, you may look at your life and determine that that is you, but that is not necessarily the case. Simply because you have encountered some surprises or some hardships in life, it is not to say that your soul does not know how to arrange or to comport itself. It is simply that it did not choose to do so aligned with this life, knowing, knowing that it would be able to draw upon all the consciousness that it needed later in life so that it did not need to program all of this into a life. Again, all of these varieties have their own perspective. No two are alike, just as no two lifetimes and no two life forms are alike. Once the essence of the soul has then determined for itself a purpose, then it begins to work with the DNA, as we have said, and then that leads to being able to create a certain life path. A life path is a little bit like a map. It is a little bit obscure, a little bit layered or veiled, but the soul can read it. Imagine that you are looking at a map at night. Well, you would be able to see very little of it. Your eyes would take a very long time to adjust to that. But just as you well know, there are certain creatures that see excellently at night and it would pose no problems for them. Well, it is this way for your soul. What may be very difficult for you to assess in terms of a life path is rather simple guidance for the soul. So the soul begins to arrange itself a little bit like you would arrange shuffled cards into a certain order. And the order makes sense, if you will, to the soul. It arranges these to suit itself 
age by age, year by year, sometimes day by day, if great enough care is taken to do so. And the soul has at its disposal everything that it has brought. These are its tools of, that it has brought. And it has access then to everything that is stored in the Akash, in the Akashic records and through what the soul has. Now, already you have a certain technology upon the earth that is very simple to use as a metaphor for this. This newer technology that you have, you call cloud technology, where you only take into your computer or into your awareness what you need in that moment because everything else is safely stored in, well, beyond your ability to reach it in the moment, but with a resource that is yours, so that whatever and whenever you need it, you only need bring it from the cloud. Well, it is the same way. The greater soul stores everything that you could possibly need, including guidance that you would need in this lifetime. So if someone has said to you, your soul indicated this or that, or this information or what it will be has come from soul's essence or soul's guidance, there is your example of where it has come from. Now, assuming that your soul does know everything as we have indicated that it does throughout every life, every purpose, every nuance, every memory of life, then to access your own soul's codes or soul's records is to access everything or the all, you see. So before you go about shopping for another teacher or another guide that you believe is wiser than your own knowingness or your own guidance, think to this moment and perhaps you will see that your soul does in fact hold just about everything that you could want or need. Now the soul is beginning to arrange a life path for itself. That life path then is not only the journey, but here you have the idea of life, not only the purpose, but how that purpose is to be lived, what that purpose will look like, what will it feel like, what will it teach, what will it share, what will it bring forward, what are the possibilities and the probabilities, what are the frequencies, the waves of pattern and such. All of this is part of the life path. It is truly a little bit like a weaving. It is the web of life. And it is the soul then that suits about creating a very accurate life garment or a garment for life or light out of light filaments. These light filaments then are unseen by human eyes but are recognized very easily by soul and soul's essence. When you choose to truly remake your life, or remake a pattern, or remake your life into a different purpose, these must be engaged. These light and life filaments must be engaged purposefully and rewritten, a little bit like you would rewrite the code of something so that it will perform or work completely differently. So the soul begins with one unique pattern, and much of the time this holds for an entire life. It is only the advanced souls and the advanced patterns that can shift into something else mid-flight, as it would be. And of course, as certain rules, not all, but as certain rules are made to be broken, those of this particular time period, at the end of a great age, as you might see, as you might notice, there is a great latitude at this time, a very great latitude for change, for one to choose change, for a very quick evolution, a very quick change from this to that and perhaps back again. So it is a time not simply of exceptions, it is a time of very vast execution of change from the soul's perspective and so this latitude then is granted or acknowledged by the greater aspect of soul. 
the greater aspect of soul is over soul, if you like. We may use that term for today's speaking. The over soul, then, is the greater part, the greater aspect of the soul that was not truly left behind. However, we are using that expression to facilitate this experience, for the topic is broad enough as it is. Now, the soul that has animated its purpose, worked upon its life path, changed or altered DNA, left triggers or patterns, breadcrumbs, if you like, for itself, now sets aside attuning itself, literally attuning itself, to as much as it will encounter in this life. This is a type of predictive essence, and it is what leads you to have your deja vu experiences when you do ultimately have them. The soul goes about then placing certain nuances, certain memories. It goes about studying to the most part, as far as it can see in that darkened map, as much as can be arranged, whom it will see, who will be its friends who will be its allies, who will be its enemies, who will be its parents, what other family members will there be, how will these dynamics play out. The patterns are laid into place, not what will happen, but if you like, they are in fact the laws of probability, they are the laws of possibility, and so the soul does its best to memorize as many of these as possible, to locate them within its being. Imagine then that you are going on safari or on a camping trip, and there you have in your pants and in your jacket pockets a great many pockets, and so in each different pocket you put a certain memory, placing them, memorizing the placement of exactly where it is, hoping that when you truly need that item, in this case a memory, you will have it. It will be accessible to you. You will know what to do with it or what it means. But of course, remember that at some point, at a certain point, the soul, every soul, in fact, must immerse itself into the density of the dimension of which it is joining. And so there is the forgetting, what you might term the valley of forgetting or the journey of forgetting or like that. And we will speak of the purpose of this as well. It is similar to that of the body that we have said that if you have too much essence, the body will burn. Well, in the same way, too many memories of being or doing or knowing and the life path itself, the DNA itself that you are working with at this time, could not truly arrange itself, and it would become a bit too much. And that which you believe that would be to your credit or to your betterment, in essence, is just the opposite, and proof is round and about you all your life. Now, the soul then arranges itself, all of the patterns that it can memorize or integrate into its map, remembrances, memories, triggers, patterns, all that it believes will help it. These are tools, after all. They are tools for life or tools for living well or for discernment later on, for discovery, for enhancement of purpose. How much of this can be done? Again, it is determined by the last life or by those factors that the soul has arranged to bring with it this time. The more qualitative the soul has arranged itself, in other words, the more that it can remember or the more vibrational frequency that it has attained, specifically in the prior life, but in others as well, but most specifically in the prior life, that gives it access to more memory or more room, a higher vibration. If you like another metaphor, that you have a more advanced computer that works more quickly, stores more information, retrieves it for you more quickly. So it is this way for the soul. It is able to do all of this, find the patterns quickly, identify their meaning or purpose in one's life, bring it about or set it aside or 
what it will be and again each soul is able to do this the quantitativeness leaves little amount to choose from and so these memories fade very quickly quantitative means that there have been many lifetimes or many attempts at a certain achievement at a certain ideal and so a soul that has attempted to learn a particular faculty a particular subject to master a particular paradigm or what it will be if it has accumulated not the qualities associated with this discovery or this learning process but instead many lifetimes associated with the attempts but only unconsciousness to show for it then at least as far as that particular subject is concerned then there will be less consciousness less awareness so that that particular subject or course of study becomes a little bit more difficult to achieve so with more quantitative attempts if you like it is not becoming easier in fact it becomes more difficult until it seems truly as if one is blindfolded and stumbling about the quicker one brings about then a study a course a life to completion to true completion of ideals the more that can be known or discovered in the next life in essence the soul invests in itself again for those that have had quantitative experiences that are brought then most of the memories are lost where do they go well they do not go anywhere but the soul enters the third dimension from a more dense place the third dimension is not simply one it is not the same third dimension for all concerned in fact there are many different layers or densities within the third dimension as there are within other dimensions according then to the soul's essence or achievement or vibration it enters human density or destiny if you like from certain gates or places or awarenesses and even this brings about an association with chakras it enters through a certain chakra into the body associated with the purpose that is most aligned with what it must learn and this is the gift of the soul if you like to facilitate that it is the final gift of the soul to allow the beingness this soul essence to enter the body or the astral plate of the body through the chakra that is the lightest that is the most beneficial that is the healthiest that is the most aligned with the greater purpose of this life and accordingly the more that is achieved in this or one life the same is true upon the exit of the body then as well exiting the body through a lighter density a lighter chakra or if you like with less pain and suffering would be one representation of that as well of course the soul and the personality later orchestrate this together and it is not simply that a quick or painless death has come to a higher vibration although there are correlations that can be drawn in this regard too the higher the frequency of the soul then the quicker and the easier the entry into the body and into the life through the higher densities of the third dimension again the lower it would be for others now as the soul then begins to truly prepare to embody the body to ensoul the body and to then enter there is a process almost as if you might imagine something that turns itself inside out and backwards all at once it turns away from itself now hear this the soul turns away from itself it turns away from the light it turns away from itself folds itself into the light 
and that folding makes the light more dense. Imagine that you have a translucent sheet of paper, but you fold it several times. With each fold, it becomes more opaque. It is the same way with the soul. First, it turns away from itself. Now, this is symbolic of turning away from the light. It is a symbol only, and yet I tell you that a great many of the very important writs in your history that speak of this, here is the error, for the original writs were written to describe this particular act, the act of how soul, in essence, enters the physical reality, and there are other writs associated to how the soul manages to leave or to escape, for that is what it must do. In the end, it must escape the gravitational pull of the third dimension that has captivated it for some time. The soul turns away from itself, and as it does so, it forgets. It forgets the other essence it forgets where it has come from. It forgets how it has designed its life. It forgets all things associated with other lifetimes and purpose. It turns away from itself. It turns away from the light. This, in many of your histories, has been termed turning to the dark or forgetting or turning to the dark light. It is not so. It is simply the normal and natural process by which life, rather than unfolds, first it must fold itself into the smaller aspects. Because why? Well, it must take this very great, great, potent, powerful essence and stuff it into a smaller, denser, darker aspect. What is the purpose of all of this? And why, indeed, would the soul do so? Why would the soul change into this apparently less advanced, physically dense, oddly shaped being and body? Well, because there is great purpose in this, because there is great advancement in this, because it is what the soul determines is its next step in climbing a ladder. And in so doing, it creates its own DNA and creates a way to climb the ladder from life. When it finally exits this life, it will have climbed the ladder just as far as it can, just as far as it can into its own life, its own essence, and into the next life, which is now just about to begin. We will come back to visit this topic very soon.